food banking historically really started in the, in the 70s and a lot of what traditional food banking is is still rooted in um, that kind of 1970s notion of, of hunger. If you come by closer to 1030 we'll have even more stuff. We really kind of refocused our mission on health. We're looking at hunger as all-encompassing in terms of how someone's health is, how the health of a neighborhood is, how the health of an individual is. And what we really need to be able to do is, is find ways to make fresh and healthy food affordable and available on a regular basis. When I started, we were struggling, like a lot of churches and faith communities, I think, in terms of kind of mem membership. Foodlink came to us and asked us if uh, we would be interested in putting a garden in and kind of experimenting. And so we started, I think it was with five or seven raised beds and every year it's grown since. We set up gardens so that we can have a direct line of fresh and healthy product going directly into the food pantry or the soup kitchen. It's changed our community. I mean, I am certain that the only reason that we're not only still here but our community is a vibrant community is because of the gardens and it has connected us with our neighborhood. How many of these would you like? One, two? One. We started to look at how do we reach folks that we know are not otherwise being served within our, our member agencies. So we actually first, in 2010, we started what we call now our Urban Farm Stand Program. We were asked, I believe it was a year after we were successfully participating in the garden, if we were interested in having a corner farm stand. We now have 10 farm stands throughout the city of Rochester all of which being run with a different neighborhood organization. It has become kind of a hub on Saturdays. People like to hang out, share stories of what's going on in their lives and even recipes. So it's a great way to connect every Saturday during the summer. Do you want something off the truck, dear? What we realized a few years back, uh, about 2012, is that there's still an immense amount of people that were missing, even by bringing a farmer's market into these neighborhoods because there's a big mobility issue. So that's where our curbside market came from. We have two different curbside market vehicles that are completely self-sustaining. We're out five days a week, five sites per day, so a total of 50 sites per week just on the two curbside vehicles. Our community store initiative, as we call it, is our attempt at, at taking existing corner stores and making them a welcoming, safe, healthy place that has great access to fresh and healthy foods. Our strategy behind this is to actually help corner stores transform into places that can actually be more of what we call a community store, a benefit, a resource center for the community. All of our food access programs, all of our nutrition education programs, they're all aimed at bringing what we do at Foodlink out of our four walls and being able to meet people where they are to provide health and nutrition resources into these communities.